HR Forum and we're talking all things HR Practitioners Handbook where we're just having a sit down with some of the authors and having a discussion about what they wrote. And today's author is the man in charge of the ethics and his chapter is Ethics in the HR Fraternity within Namibia's Context. Lifa, thanks for spending time with us. How are you doing? Thank you for having me. And I'm doing really well and you know, I'm really excited about this, uh, this interview and getting to express and be part of something so big. Well, what are ethics? I, I don't know. Um, uh, so ethics, right, to explain it in a nutshell is that we have morals which is right and wrong. Yes. So usually what we understand is there are many ways to determine what's right and wrong mm -hmm. and ethics is what we use to determine them. So it's a bunch of principles that we apply in everyday situation to try and figure out what's the best way to do something correctly and right and wrong. So in terms of HR, I think there's been a whole debacle I'll mm -hmm. piggyback on some of our neighboring countries and within the Malawian context where relatives have been employed. Does your chapter tie into that, whether it's the right way to do things, it's not the right way to do things? Oh, definitely. So that's one of the most key integral parts of it. So mm -hmm. when I was writing the, the book, I had to also com communicate with uh, Dr. Clifford, who was one of the spearheads in, in this. And it was, we gave a large context of how these other countries have HR professional bodies to make sure these ethical uh -huh. dilemmas are deli uh, uh, expressed because you have things where people offer to not only just their family members but people in their general vicinity uh -huh. so therefore it always isolates you can't compete as a candidate uh, ethically when it's not you it's not your cv versus someone else's cv but your surname versus someone else's surname uh -huh. or your tribe versus someone else's tribe or your skin color versus someone else's skin color so ethics yeah. tries to border around and make sure that uh, is what is are the practices that hr professions doing uh, something that's morally right is it right to employ your siblings, your siblings and so forth over someone else who may be more qualified or you know more suitable for the job and those questions begin to arise to arise in the chapter so yes. you ask these questions i'm sitting now behind my desk as an hr practitioner and i'm faced with a dilemma where somebody needs a job and they're related to somebody in a higher position in the organization where do i go for the right answer they're qualified they really meet the criteria but in terms of optics and how it will look, where do I then go for an answer? Specifically, you've said we don't have that body to guide us through that. So usually in bigger companies, it's usually you can you can remove yourself from it. So like you don't interview the person, uh -huh. you're not directly in charge of that. Okay. And so it becomes complicated. Other others, other institutes, for instance, I believe the United Nations and certain institutes with um, websites, they have that criteria already built into when you apply. They go like, are you related to anyone in the business? Or does uh -huh. someone uh -huh. work in the department? So they can flag those areas and, and realize that, okay, you might be favored or not favored. Okay. So that the questions are tabled and saying, okay, this person has people in this department. And so ethics not just necessarily limited to that. It's a lot of things that we do. So like, even I think you'll see in wellness and so forth on other sub these topics of of, of um, like for instance workplace bullying yes, and yes. all those things yeah. that that becomes also an ethical matter because when do you navigate what is workplace bullying and what so is not what is bullying. and it's also the same as we grow especially with the time like social media when uh, when is it your post gets gets your job gets you fired from your job and yes is it like one from twenty five years ago and all when, the, so those questions those uh, ethical matters and so forth. When do we start asking those questions? You must be bold to write something <laughs> like this in this cancel culture world, I must say, because... Yes. But it's, not, it's just also not limited to that. It's just basically, yeah. if it happens, what are the ethical channels? Because we can't just... If one if we're saying a well, racist post gets you fired, how far do we go the other way? Like, you know, tribalist post, sexist post? Yes. It's usually all those Because things. then there's... Everybody now has a group. Yes. But if we, we can go on about this conversation <laughs> the whole day, Indeed. especially you and I, and ethics never come to an end from since the first philosophers came onto the world and Definitely. wrote about <laughs> ethics and stuff. So massive job, well done for yeah. writing such an integral chapter within the book and especially a topic that's hugely contestable. So congratulations on that. And we hope that this is not the end for you. I'm, I'm hoping there's more to come. I know there's more. I think especially if we're building towards ethics, because I think our country has the potential to build in that. Absolutely. Ask those questions and have that body built and, you know, interact with one another better and in a way that we can all be happy with it that this was the right thing to be done yeah. and so forth. And if the questions are never asked, then the answers will never come. So well exactly. done, Lifa, for asking those questions in your book. There you have it. It's still the HR Practitioner's Handbook, a book by Namibians for Namibians. Get a copy and you'll definitely grow Namibia's workforce. Until next time, ciao.